All right, here we go. It is my honor to be speaking to the West Coast Godfather of the game and the Pope of Pimpin in the house. Fillmore Slim, how are you? I'm all great. Thank you so much for joining us, man. I've been wanting to do this interview for a very, very long time. All right, then. And uh, wow, you're currently 84 years old. 84. And you look great, by the way. Thank you. You look great. Uh, you, you sound great. Your skin looks great. Uh, I think uh, I think everyone would be lucky to be your age at the shape that you're in right now. Well, you know, I get that everywhere I go. People don't believe I'm age of four. No, oh, yeah, the game, absolutely. The game kept me like this, you know. <laughs> That's what it is. The game kept you like this. I love it. Well, this is our first time talking, so I really want to get into your whole story. Um... So, where were you born? Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And, I mean, I'm looking online, you were born in 1934. That's right. And you were the third of eight children? Yeah, yes I was. I am four boys and four girls. Okay, so, you're talking about the, the 30s and the 40s down south. This was before Martin Luther King. This was before the Civil Rights Movement. How racist was Baton Rouge during that time? Oh, wow. I couldn't even, you know, we couldn't even, you know, in Baton Rouge, that's the capital of Louisiana, right? So uh, you got the Baton Rouge General there, you know, the hospital, you know. So if, you, if a baby was born in Baton Rouge, he had to, he had to go to New Orleans. So I was born, I just found that out by midwife. Okay, so you were actually born in your house. That's right. Okay. And what do you think was the most racist things that you saw during this time? Oh, I, well, the most racist time I seen was, you know, probably when, maybe about 12, 13 years old, you know, yeah. Okay, and what kind of things happened during that time? Well, the thing was happening then, you know, you couldn't, you had the, you had the white family, you had the black family, you know, I mean, you could, just like in Zane Pittman, you had the white family, the black family, so, and then you had to go around to the back to be served, you know, you could go in the front door, you know, and uh, I lived with that, you know. W were there lynchings and hangings uh, during that time? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, and did you ever see any of that or experience it? Yeah, I seen some of it. I, I seen some, you know, in the South, you know. It was boy and girl, you know, boy and uncle, you know. I seen that, you know, coming up, you know, but I had to deal with it. But I mean, I had to leave that because I, I didn't, uh, uh, you know, I, I just, I was stubborn, you know, I didn't want to say, when he called me a boy, you know, I'd turn around and look at him kind of crazy, you know. I ain't no boy, you know, I'm a young man, you know, but it didn't go right with me, so they had to get me up out of the South because I didn't want to follow the rules. Right, because, uh, oh, hold on, let me just look it up real quick. Uh, when did this happen? Um, I mean, because in... 1955, you had the whole Emmett Till situation. Oh, oh yeah, 1955, that's right. And you, and you remember that? Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. So, so back then, if you were caught with a white girl, it was over for you? Oh, you got home. Then hang. Yeah, man. Sad times. Sad times. Okay. So, you're growing up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. uh, but at one point... You wanted to leave. Oh yeah, yeah, I wanted to leave. What what made you leave Baton Rouge? Well, what made me leave Baton Rouge, Louisiana? See, I miss it. Going in and out of reform schools, so they sent me to uh, Woodland, Mississippi. You know, to stay with my grandparents. Okay, my grandfather. So then, when I got to Woodland, Mississippi, then that's when I was working in the field, picking cotton and you know farming and doing stuff like that. So. Uh, I got, you know, I, I I didn't like that too well, you know. I mean, I'd come from school. But really what made me leave there is uh, I came from school one time, you know. we come, Our lunch would be in a lunch bucket, you know, hanging up high. So you had to come from school and then you do your chores, right? 
So I did that. Then uh, what happened is uh, I put my bucket down there and went to feed the chicken. I come back, the cat done ate up my food, right? So I hanged the cat. They say the cat got nine lives, so I hanged the cat nine times, okay? And after I did that, okay, uh, my grandmother asked me, but well, boy, where the cat at, you know? I said, I don't know, so I buried the cat in the backyard. So she back there in the backyard digging and she dug the cat up and she knew I had to kill the cat. So she, then she whooped me with a big a bull whip, you know, and after the whooping, I called the freight train. You know, I hopped the freight train and went to New Orleans. And from New Orleans, you know, I left there and uh, I went off, uh, I went to California. And then, okay. I, and then when I came to California, uh, it was too fast for me, so I went back home. And uh, then I came to California later on after that. Okay, so you initially went to Los Angeles, right? Yeah, right. Okay, and back then, black people weren't even allowed to go on Sunset Boulevard. Oh, no, 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 no. But uh, during that time, I was playing at a little coffee shop in Hollywood. You know, we could play there, you know, but uh, that's the only time we could be out there because the police would stop us and say, I said, well, I played at the little coffee shop down the street as a musician. And it was all right. No, black people wasn't allowed in Hollywood. No. So you go back to to Louisiana again? Yeah, I go back to Louisiana. Okay, and you're at this point you're playing music. First, and... I came to San Francisco, but then when I went back to Louisiana, came back, I came to Los Angeles. Okay, and at this point you're now playing music and performing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was playing music. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and what were you playing mostly? Oh, I was playing, I was playing the blues, you know, I played guitar, yeah. Okay. And, and we lived, you know, when I got to LA, you know, uh, I got a job down there on Alameda, Alameda Street down there in the Gama District. So I worked for a place called United Belt, and we deliver clothes to like Bullocks on Broadway and all that down there, you know. And then I ran into this promoter, his name was Fulbright. And uh, he had all these musicians. He had, uh, uh, you know, he had Phil Walker. You know, he had a lot of other people, you know. And uh, so he would take us on the road. But when we wasn't on going on the road, uh, we had to work around the house. They had this big old house on Figaro and Adams. So we used to, you know, we had to do chores around the house, like paint the house, keep the grass cut, until we went out on the road. And when we went on the road, you know, and then we, we were all down to Texas. And how old were you at the time? Oh, I would say about 19. 